Hey guys, welcome to book review number eight. Eight. However you say eight. Zero. Today I'm going to be reviewing Hometown Boy. Uh, Peter Hessler's Strange Stones. Dispatches from the East and the West. Now, unlike Peter's other books, this is not uh, one flowing narrative, but actually a collection of um, pieces from his time at uh, the New Yorker, National Geographic. Um, I think he wrote some. Did he write for some for the Times? I don't know. He wrote for uh, numerous different papers, and this is kind of a collection of his essays that he wrote for various um, various papers for from his time in China as well as his time in the state of Colorado. Uh, let's see. We got Wild Flavor that has to do with uh, the Rat Restaurant. I might just kind of go through these. Wild flavor that has to do with the, the rat restaurant and the particularly competing restaurants that tried to say which one had the better rat. Restaurant A or restaurant B. I don't know. I think restaurant A has the better rat. Um, let's see, what else? Boomtown Girl. We talked about kind of the struggles of a girl moving from the countryside to Xi'an Jin or Shenzhen, which is the big uh, you know, uh, industrial hub across the river, from, or across the bay from Hong Kong and Guang, uh, Guangdong. Um, I remember there was one that he had that was like, uh, had to do with the rise of the Yangtze uh, River at the Three Gorges Dam, and about these places that were gonna get flooded. Kind of about the impracticality of it, how there was so much silt in the Yangtze River that there's a chance that the lake formed by uh, the Three Gorges Dam would silt up within a couple decades. Pretty stupid. Um, uh, man, I got it. It's so hot out here. I got to get some uh, water in me. Let's see. He talks about kind of in Colorado the uranium uh, mines down there, uh, and how people because uranium is. Uh, such a job producer that people that was even destroying their lives through radiation would deny it because the economy of southwest Colorado was so uh, depressed. Um, let's see. Car Town, Home and Away. This is underwater. I'm just going to randomly flip through these and see what I got. Um, yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the one where the water rises. Uranium window. Uh, oh, uh, all due respect. He does do one from Japan about, you know, Peter's from Columbia. I'm from Columbia, and there's also this guy Jake Edelson that's from Columbia that has apparently become a larger-than-life figure in Tokyo. And Peter really lived in Beijing, but would occasionally stop over in Tokyo to see this guy just because of how much of a sort of uh, self-created manga figure in real life he became in terms of fighting crime getting in with the yakuza's i mean it's pretty crazy um just yeah uh really kind of on the inside uh i think that he had been beaten up at some point um i trying to think this one oh, this is a short one something about kfc huh you know, the KFCs are really big in uh, China. I think they might be bigger, have gotten bigger in China just in terms of total number of restaurants and maybe even revenue than in the uh, than in the United States. Uh, oh, he obviously, one that he mentions in both uh, Country Driving and in Strange Stones is a story that he did. He was driving uh, west, uh, kind of through the Gobi Desert or kind of just south of the Gobi Desert near the Great Wall following it to its western terminus. And uh, the one time in China that he really felt like, well, I'm sure there were multiple times in China that he felt under pressure, but the one time that he really felt like he was kind of on the razor's edge of um, being violently uh, hurt was he went into these this uh, antique shop. Now, they have all these antique shops uh, in the middle of the desert where nobody lives. You think, why would they do this? Well, actually what they are are uh, sort of fake antiques that are made to look like real things 
and then when the customer comes in they squeeze through a very narrow entrance and uh, either they uh, accidentally knock over one of the pieces themselves or the proprietor who you know is a scam artist uh, knocks over a piece uh, in which case the client is accused of knocking over the piece and has to pay for the full price for the antique even though it's a fake antique they have to pay what like the real price of the antique was it's a kind of a scam and if you try to argue with them uh, they eventually um, uh, you know, you could be hurt. You could be, you're kind of cajoled into this. Now, it's rare for Westerners to really experience this. I think it's more common that Chinese do it on fellow Chinese. Um, but Peter said they did get into that incident. And uh, I think what he eventually did is there was another small trinket that they offered to sell him in the store for what was a high price for that trinket, but relatively small amount of money overall, maybe like 10 or $20. And so Peter agreed to buy it. Uh, just to extract himself from the circumstance. Um, one of the other ones that I really liked was the, uh, see I'm not even gonna be able to find it now, is the one where he walks the wall with, uh, he walks the wall with an expert, and I can't remember the expert's name. Um, but uh, I do remember that uh, this expert on the Great Wall of China essentially became sort of uh, obsessed or kind of lost in his own obsession of the Great Wall in that he was working on this as an independent research project initially funded I think through a university or in collaboration with a university uh, but when the size of the project kept sprawling and sprawling and sprawling um, the university eventually cut him off and he went into his own uh, sort of self-research kind of in his own free time um, and now to the point that he really feels that he'll be able to publish uh, something. Now this isn't Peter, obviously, this is one of Peter's friends, and I really wish I knew where this was uh, in this book. Uh, I really wish I knew where this was in this book, because then I could actually name the guy's name, because he deserves some credit. Um, he deserves some credit for how much... Uh, how much effort he's put into this project of uh, oh. silent pause there's going to be a silent pause here uh, of how much effort he's put into getting the Great Wall uh, project going you know of all the things that have been studied in China the Great Wall despite all the literature that's out on it and how much is it, it's in the uh, public perception there really have been very few studies uh, comprehensively on an academic level uh, of what the Great Wall entails, how long it is, how many different walls it is, you know, it's not just one wall, um, what years it was made, what the, uh, you know, different building techniques were, stone, sand, rock, um, well, rock, brick. Uh, so that's all just completely lacking, partially because you know, for a long time when uh, uh, Mao Zedong was in power, obviously none of that research was going on. So it's really just kind of recently opened up for new discovery, even though it's a very old thing, if you will. Um, yeah, I wish I could give that guy some credit. Oh, he talks about a uh, NBA player. You know, uh, he covered, uh, I think when he was maybe in Colorado, we went down to Houston to cover, no, 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 he didn't go down to Houston. He was in uh, Shanghai because Yao Ming, who's obviously a huge, huge influential figure in sports uh, in China, probably the, mo probably the most famous uh, sports figure in China, kind of came down and he gave an interview with him. And Yao kind of uh, gave him his talk about what the NBA means, uh, just both in terms of economics as well as just kind of him personally. Um, I mean, economics of China. Uh, he also mentioned that Yao Ming really likes snake, which is kind of a well-known thing. Um, let's see. I'm going to talk to Yao. I don't know. It's There's so many good stories in here. I mean, I think there's like 20 stories or something. That to go through all of them are pretty much impossible, but uh, like, for example, the... Uh, drug dealer 
drug dealer, the pharmacist, not an actual like illegal drug dealer. The pharmacist that kind of would occasionally run his business at a loss in uh, southwest China because he knew that people in the area affected by the uranium mines um, would need medicine and it was more a necessity uh, than a want. Uh, so he would occasionally run his mom and pop business at a loss just to uh, cover people when they needed it. I mean, there's a lot of great, great stories in here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I really haven't done it justice to all the different uh, uh, types of uh, stories in here, but if you like just sort of like uh, little souffles or uh, what are the Spanish called? They call it tapas. If you like little tapas of uh, stories on China, a uh, little... Uh, uh, it's another word they have in Hong Kong that I should know. The little um, little dishes in Hong Kong. What is that called? Well, anyway, I'm going to remember it the second I turn the camera off. If you like the little dishes uh, of multiple, multiple servings, check this book out. It's got a lot of great uh, essays in it. And it uh, really gives you an idea of what a good writer Peter is. Uh, the one thing I've, I think I'll finally mention is uh, not particularly about any one story, but really I think Peter's genius is is he just keeps pulling that string like if if society is a shirt and uh or a sweater and we can all see like the 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 print on the sweater that china wants you to see or sort of the outer thing but what really peter does that is so so good is he really just gets into the mentality of the people what's going on behind the scenes uh what the true sociological uh, motivation is between various events, not just kind of what the canned answer that the government will give you, or at times even the canned answer that the Chinese citizens will give you, seeing that China is a country that it's not always easy to get answers out of its citizens, partially because of fear of government, but also partially just because that's the society. In a society that tends to be kind of closed-lipped, Peter really just keeps pulling that string and pulling that string and really gets the good stories going. So. Anyway, I think I'm going to make this it. Strange Stones Dispatches from East and West. Uh, it's a great combination of uh, stories. You guys should check it out. Okay, like I said, I'm sure I did this a little bit of injustice, but it really was a good book. Uh, check it out, you guys.